Scotland go off well pleased by the goal from Gordon McQueen, number five. An even match until the 43rd minute, but McQueen's power in the air from set pieces, which is something England knew all about, has given the Scots the advantage at half-time. Ali McLeod there, walking to his seat, well aware that his job and Don Reedy's job is to build a team to qualify for Argentina next summer. But he'll never convince these supporters that the most important thing is not to beat England. And they believe that, and they can see, with a goal in hand at half-time, a possibility anyway, of Scotland retaining the international championship that they won last year. Don't forget, if the score stays like this, Scotland would win the title outright with five points. And it went on to Dalglish. Dalglish again, and it's there. Scotland go two goals up. Ali McLeod celebrates. So does Dalglish and thousands of supporters. Brilliant ball from Hartford down the line to Willie Johnston. The ball curled back, Bruce Rion getting the header in. It ran on from Macari. Dalglish got the first shot, blocked by the defender. Dalglish went in again, and perhaps with the help of the deflection, it went over the line. But England have been beaten here three times in one season. And Scotland are the third side to beat them here. Holland came and won, Wales came and won, and Ali McLeod, Scotland, in his first match as manager against England, have gained their first victory over the old enemy since 1967. A ten-year wait it's been, they invaded the pitch ten years ago, and they're here again. The Wembley fence is not yet up, so the fans have come over the barriers. England's players walking sadly away. The Scots, who, let's be fair, thoroughly deserved the win. A late penalty, perhaps, making the scoreline more respectable for England, who had their best spell in the second half. But Scotland, with a goal just before half-time, and an important second one from Dalglish, have won the Home International Championship outright in Bruce Rioch's first season as captain. The scene so typically Scottish. This biannual pilgrimage hasn't been a happy one over the last few years, but there's certainly going to be some celebrations tonight. And the Wembley pitch, perhaps one shouldn't say anything uh, other than critical about this because crowd invasions have been one of the reasons why fences have gone up everywhere and indeed are going up at Wembley. And you're really divided between appreciating the delight of the Scottish fans but not wanting to see the ground pulled apart like this. They've even knocked the goals down and broken the crossbar. You just can't overestimate the passion and enthusiasm that the Scots have for football. But it comes to a head, really, when they beat England. Because for these people, beating England is more important in many ways than doing well in the World Cup. Well, they'll need a new goal net at that end of Wembley, that's for certain, and uh, the one at the other end is coming in for a fair amount of attention as well. So what the picture says is that Scotland are the international champions for 1966-76-77. As they were indeed last season, they win it with five points, two wins and a draw. Wales are second with four points. England, having lost two of their three games, are a disappointing third with only two points, and Northern Ireland on the bottom with just the one point. Well, there we are, a fine victory for Scotland, which I'm sure no one's going to begrudge them, certainly not any members here of, uh, of our panel, but first of all, Doc, to do justice to Scotland, who were the heroes? I think the whole team, the whole team played well, it would be... Maybe God McQueen outstanding of the whole, the whole lap, but the whole team played well together, fought for each other, 
the game was always going their way and they finished up well in top. Scottish midfield, Tom, could you talk a bit about uh, their performance today, which I thought was superb? I think individually and collectively, the three of them are outstanding. Uh, so much strength and depth that they brought off Don Masson, probably one of the best players in the side, and you can bring on a fellow like Archie Gemmell. Tremendous strength, isn't it? And even Lou Macari, when he came on, was exemplary, wasn't he? Well, yeah, you see this and other. You know, this was really frustrating when you see two players like that who can't get into the side, coming on as substitute. Yeah. A word from you, Alan, on Scotland? I th they looked a good side to me today, Jim. Um, yeah. Much the better side of the two sides today. Although, give credit to England, I thought they fought very, very well. Yeah. But they were always lacking in certain departments. And uh, which Scotland always had the better of them in, in the game. I think that goal, the Scottish goal, probably uh, it really illustrated that better than ever. It was, it, it was a brilliant Asa ball. Hartford's beautiful brilliant through ball, ball from on Asa Hartford. We, we never saw one ball from any of our midfield players like that, you see. Nobody. It was a brilliant ball. Well, let's take a look at that now and see the beauty of that goal. It was sort of old fashioned football, if you like. That was the ball from Asa Hartford. Great cross as well coming up from Willie Johnson. You know, right to the far post. Good header back from Bruce Rioch. Old-fashioned cross, a oh, bit of a dummy from Lou Macari coming up. Good cross on the run, good dummy from Lou, and Kelly Dalglish is there. It's a first shot's blocked, but again, the lad's off, you know, he's off again, he wants to get the rebound, it's in the back of the net. Let's, uh, let's go now and, uh, and hear from probably the happiest man of Wembley at the moment, Ali McLeod, the new Scottish manager, and he's talking to Barry Davis. Ali, not a bad start to an international career as an international manager. Oh, tremendous. What, what an atmosphere it's been. Last three minutes was a wee bit nerve-wracking, but other than that, I was quite happy right through. What, for you, were the main differences between the two sides? Basically, I think that Scotland has a settled side. You know, I think in the end, Don will get a good side, but I took over a good side. You know, I'm not taking the credit. I think Willie Orman plays a big part in the present Scotland team, and I've just got to make sure I keep it ticking over. I think it's a settled side, and they play like a club side. That's the main thing, and they take their chances well. <laughs> Well, you, you put your arm round Kenny Dalgrease. Kenny, you have a habit of taking chances against England. Well, that's my job, Barry. I'm there all around to try and score goals, and if I happen to put them in, I'm just lucky. I don't really care who scores for Scotland. Well, we can have a look at that goal again, Kenny. Um, the way you picked yourself up again after the first chance had, had been blocked. Very good ball by Asa Harper for a start. It was a great ball from Asa and a great cross from Molly. And uh, Bruce Real comes in at a back post and he headers it across. And uh, Louis. I don't know whether Louis left it, it. No, it. it. Mm. And I thought the, the boy had blocked it there. But I just kept going and forced it over the line, fortunately. You did get up a bit sharp there, didn't you? Well, I don't think I was ever down. I think the boy kept me up there, looking at it. I never really noticed in the park. When you're one nothing up, you get up every time. You, when you don't worry about lying in the ground. And that's Kenny's job. He just finished it off. You know? Ali, you've done what the Scottish supporters obviously wanted Scotland to do so much, to beat England. But where do you go from here? Oh, it's got to be Wales and Czechoslovakia. You know, they all said at Wales it was a bad result, nothing each, you know. I was just finding my feet. I'm sure now that Scotland have gone to the World Cup final. Nothing bars away.